Hello, everyone. Today's devotional reading will be from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19, where it is written, And now I'm no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I'm coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one that is destined to be lost, the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I give them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. And as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus Christ sends his church into the world. The world hates them. In the Roman Empire days, persecution was intermittent. But it happened. Crucifixion, beheading, burning, thrown to the lions. Now why on earth would you put up with any of that if you knew it wasn't true? You wouldn't. The end. If this were just a human cult or a human idea, it would have lasted a little bit then died. The Roman Empire is long gone. The Christian faith is still here. And we, the thing of this planet is a loaf of bread, the church is the leaven. What is the single largest source of charity in this world? Now I'm talking about theology, doctrine, or so on. It's the church. Strictly speaking, it's the Catholic Church is the largest source of private charity on this planet. They're in the Orthodox and the Protestant churches on top of that. Humanitarian aid. Without the church, this world would be very different and not in a good way. And that's just one example of us being the leaven, the light of the world. And now we get into the doctrine. Our world tells you it's tit for tat, revenge, no forgiveness. It's not what Jesus teaches. Everyone who repents is forgiven. The world says, look out for number one. It doesn't matter. Jesus says, everyone matters. I'm the almighty God. I'll put myself last to put you ahead of me. Jesus is very much the opposite of the world. And things weren't spiritual. Why would the world have such a viscerally negative reaction against Jesus Christ? The fact that, and him, him and his followers. The fact that it does shows you the supernatural is in fact very real. And we need to be out there. The church, there are times it must, you know, huddle down and cultivate. But it's never our main mission. Our mission is out there to transform the culture, to transform the world. That's why God called us. He died to forgive us. He rose again that all might rise with him. And when he returns for a second time, this world will be transformed. Between then and now, we're to work with him on that transformation in any way we can. Transforming ourselves, transforming the people around us by his gospel, and so on. But that is why we're here. That's why we're forgiven. That's why we'll rise again on the last day. To be that leaven that works through the dough and transforms the world. And we're going to get pushback. If you're not getting pushback, you're doing something wrong. But it's worth it. Because think of it this way. If you're not working with Jesus, Jesus to transform the world, what on earth are you doing with your life? I mean, would you be a famous actor, make big money, sit around and play video games all day, fill in the blank? Those things are all right, a little bit for themselves, but do they really satisfy? No. In Jesus, we, we use the source of our life. In him, we find true meaning. If you're not working with him, your life has no point. So why oppose him? Work with him. Let us close with prayer. Lord, thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for making us your children. And God, by your Holy Spirit, energize us to follow you always. Amen.